Well, good morning, everyone. I trust that you are well and that you are staying safe in this crazy time in our world. We've just concluded our first Tuesday Truth series called Lessons from Lockdown, and I hope that it was an encouragement to you. But this morning, we're kicking off with a brand new series called Stuck in the Mud. Now, I don't know whether you've been stuck in the mud before, but but I, I can think about kind of one experience when we got stuck in some really bad mud. I was at university and um, a bunch of us guys decided to go away on a man's weekend, a man's camp. And it just happened to be one of those weekends that was pouring with rain. It was just cold and wet and miserable. The perfect scenario for a bunch of men to get together and do a man's camp. On the last day, though, um, when we were leaving, we were driving down the, the dirt or now kind of mud road, slipping and sliding everywhere. And before we knew it, our car got stuck in the mud. We just couldn't move. So we got out in the pouring rain and we had to start digging, digging around the tires, digging up rocks, kind of putting those rocks around the wheels until after about two, three hours Finally, we managed to get this car gripping on the rocks and moving forward and getting out of the mud. You can imagine what we looked like. Now, maybe you've been stuck in the mud before, maybe you haven't. But what I do know this morning is that every single one of us, if you are a follower of Jesus, has had a time where you felt stuck in the mud in your relationship with him, where you've just felt like you're not moving forward where maybe you feel like you're not growing or you feel like God is far away or silent. Um, You feel dry, like it's a wintry season. Maybe you feel stuck in a particular sin, pattern of sin that you just kind of can't get out of. Well, I want you to know that these seasons of feeling stuck in the mud are common for all followers of Jesus. We all go through seasons like that. But having said that, this morning, I want to talk about the myth of the mud. You see, because although those feelings of being stuck are a reality, actually being stuck is a myth. I want you to listen to these words from Paul in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 to 6. Listen to this. How blessed is God, and what a blessing He is. He's the Father of our Master Jesus Christ, and takes us to the high places of blessing in Him. Long before He laid down earth's foundations, get this, He had us in mind, had settled on us as the focus of His love, to be made whole and holy by His love. I love this. Long, long ago, he decided to adopt us into his family through Jesus Christ. What pleasure he took in planning this. He wanted us to enter into the celebration of his lavish gift giving by the hand of his beloved son. What do we see here? Well, when I read these verses, I see that God predestined or chose us to be in him before we were born. He chose us to be adopted as his children before we had a say in the matter. It was God's intention for us to be born physically and to be born again spiritually, to be made part of of his family. It was God's plan for there to be a moment in our lives where we confessed our sin and believed in Jesus for salvation. A little bit further down, we read this in verse 11. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eye on us had designs on us for glorious living, part of the overall purpose he is working out in everything and everyone. There it is again. We were chosen 
to be God's children. It was part of his glorious plan to make us his kids. So so can you see what I'm seeing from these verses? If you are saved by Jesus today, if you are his follower, you had nothing to do with that. It was God's plan for that to happen for you before you were even born. You had absolutely no part in saving yourself because it was all God's doing. The very ability to ever feel convicted over your sin, the the very ability to bring that in confession to God, the very ability to believe that Jesus is the only way to forgive you and to save you, That's a gift from God. That's not something you could conjure up for yourself. That kind of faith, that kind of conviction is the work of God in your life. So why is this so encouraging? Well, have a look with me at another quality, amazing verse. One of my favorites found in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. And I'm reading again from the message because I just love the way that it puts it. This is what Paul says again to the Philippians this time. There has never been the slightest doubt in my mind that the God who started this great work in you, this great salvation work in you, would keep at it and bring it to a flourishing finish On the very day Christ Jesus appears. Hold on a minute. So if the work of God saving me was not my own doing and it was God's, then this verse is telling me that the work of keeping me moving forward, keeping me growing, keeping me becoming more and more like Jesus, able to follow the way of Jesus, is also God's work. And this verse tells me that he promises to finish it. It it is his mission, his desire, his prerogative to finish what he started in his followers. So, Can you get stuck? Well, you can feel stuck. But can you actually get stuck if we take this verse seriously? No. Because it's God who keeps us moving forward. So even if we could get stuck, it would be up to him to get us out of the mud. If you are a follower of Jesus, you cannot get stuck Because God will keep you moving forward and growing in him until the day that Jesus returns. And when you see him, you will be perfect and he will embrace you. What a glorious day that will be. Now, does that mean that you can never, ever experience feeling stuck? Of course not. Like I said, We all feel that way. Maybe you feel that way right now. Stuck. Like you just can't connect with God. But the encouragement for you is that God won't keep you there. Sometimes he allows us to experience seasons like this. Because sometimes we need to go through them to realize how much we need him. You see, it's never God who runs away, it's us. We're the ones who rebel, we're the ones who love other things more than him. And sometimes he uses these feelings of stuckness to show us the things that we've been running to and relying on, to deepen our need for him, to deepen our craving for him, and to show us more and more each day how much he loves us. So, I want you to hold on to these truths this morning and be encouraged. 
If you feel stuck in the mud, you won't stay there forever. God will get you out because he loves you too much to keep you there. And it's his promise to you to keep you moving forward. He'll finish what he started. Enjoy God this week, guys. Lots of love. Cheers. Cheers.